It's time for a little black dress or a little black tunic. Which one would you like to sew? It don't matter, cause guess what? I'm gonna give you that pattern review and a sew along. So if that's some content you would like to see, please continue to watch. Welcome or welcome back to the channel. My name is Rochelle from Rochelle Handmade Designs. And in this video, I am going to be sharing with you how I created this little black dress or a little black tunic, whichever one that you decide, using Simplicity 9748. So I also did a sew along for this, so stay tuned for that sew along as well. But if you are new to the channel, oh, welcome. Hello, child, guten tag, aloha, hola, konnichiwa, waguan, sambanani, salon, bonjour. If you're returning, you know what to do. Go get your quick snack, something to drink, come on back so we could go ahead and get into this pattern review first, and then off to the sew along. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right on into it. All right, starting with the pattern description. So. The pattern that I did was Simplicity 9748. For the pattern description, it is basically a top that features a deep V neckline. It has slight gathers at the shoulder yoke. It also features sleeve options. So view A, you have like your slit sleeves. View B, you have the elasticated sleeves. View C, and well, view B, you also have the puff sleeves with the elastic at the bottom. View C, you have elastic at the bottom, but it's like a small, narrow hem um, for the hem as well. And then view D is your options for sleeveless. So you have different um, variations of the sleeves as well. All right, let's go ahead and get into skill level for this pattern. So the skill level for this pattern is weight is rated as average. Do I feel this pattern is average? Absolutely, okay. <laughs> Um, the reason why I feel that this is average is because the way that this is considered the um, upper front, I think is what this uh, pattern piece number one is, um, upper front, yes. So the upper front have you stitch and then cut to that V in order to create the V neck. That can be, you know, a little... I could say that it will be a little confusing if you're not used to do, doing something like that. Another thing that can trip you up would be the ties because you have to sew it with the right side, I'm sorry, the wrong side of your tie to the right side of the bodice. So in the tutorial, you'll hear me say right sides together, but please sew wrong side to right side. All right, I'm gonna put it up on the screen so you are aware of what part, when I say right sides together, it's wrong side to right side. I did make that correction in the sew along, all right? Another thing that can trip you up would be, um, trying to think, um, attaching the side front, I believe, it was the side front to the upper front and then the side front to the bottom. So it, it, it could be a couple of things that can trip you up, but if you watch the sew along, you're not gonna need the instructions or anything, just watch the sew along and you will be good to go. All right, let's talk about notion use. So the only notion that you need is elastic. Um, so the pattern calls for three eighths inch elastic. That is basically what I used. But if you are using a half an inch elastic, please make sure that you make your casing about three fourths of an inch um, seam allowance so you could sift your elastic all the way through. That's all I'm gonna say. If you're using um, like five eighths inch, make your casing one inch so you have enough room to sift, sift that elastic all the way through, all right? Let's talk about fabric use. So the fabric use is a crate. Now, I thought I bought this crate from Joann's and I did because I had to go back. I couldn't remember if it was from Fabric Mark or if it was from um, Joann's. But this I purchased from Joann's last year when I uh, purchased some other crate fabric. So um, I will put the link up on the screen where the actual number um, for Joann's fabric because I did see some when I went to Joann's over the weekend. All right, let's talk about pattern pieces. Now, I'm not gonna get into pattern pieces because you will hear this again in the sew along, but you know, for this pattern, you will need roughly about nine pieces that you will cut one 
well, 10 total, but nine is cut out of uh, fabric and then one is your elastic guide. All right, so I'm gonna put it up and tell you exactly which patterns you need. You need one, two, you need one your upper front, two your upper side front, four your yoke front, five your lower front, six your back, seven your back facing, 10 your tight ends, 11 your sleeves, and then 12 your elastic guide. Those are all the pattern pieces that you need. And by the way, I did view B. Um, I don't know if I said that, but I did view B on this pattern. All right, let's talk about pattern sizing. So for this pattern, it comes in two envelopes. So the first envelope is six to 14 and the second one is 16 to 24. The size that I cut was a size 16 for this pattern. And when I say that I actually like it, but I did make a modification. So let's get right on into it. Did I make any modifications to this pattern? I did. <laughs> I did. So the reason why I made modifications to this pattern, Simplicity 9748, was simply because I seen it as a top or tunic, but I also seen it, seen it as a LBD or little black dress. Now, one thing that I will say is my modification, I lengthened the uh, lower front, which is pattern piece number five, I lengthened it and made it like a 5A, a lower front extension, which you will see in the sew along. I lengthened it by seven and a quarter inch, that's seven and one fourth, okay? I also did the same thing to the back because whatever you do to the front, you pretty much need to do to the back when you are lengthening it because otherwise it's going to be off. So I lengthened the back by seven and a quarter. Now, one thing I will mention is because I did account for it as a longer tunic. I did not account for it to be a dress. So if you are wanting to do what I did and create a dress, I would highly advise you to add three more inches, about two to three inches, depending on your height. Now I am five, six, and in the photos, you will see where it stops on me. So because of that, I will definitely say, if you want to make this a dress to your knees, add three more inches and just basically um, do that extension piece at 10 and a quarter inch instead of seven and a quarter and then lengthen the back the same amount of 10 and a quarter inch and you should have a nice lovely LBD or little black dress. All right, so you'll see that extension piece in the sew along. All right, let's go ahead and talk about, did it look like the photos or the drawings on the pattern envelope? Absolutely, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It looks so amazing and you guys, so in one of the, so the photos that I took with my black pair of jeans and some black shoes, I just threw in a um, a pop of color. I didn't want to wear just all black, so I threw in a pop of color, and that was just a brown little handbag throw over hobo type bag, and that was amazing. And then the one that, the photos that I took with the dress, I did it with my black handbag for it to be an all black look. So I do love the photos. I took them this morning <laughs> and I'm doing this this morning as well. So that was amazing um, to do as well. Um, so let's talk about are the instructions easy to follow? Yes, they are actually spot on and good to follow. You will not get tripped up in the instructions if you follow along with the instructions, but why follow along with the instructions when I did a sew along for you guys, all right? So just follow along with the sew along, all right? Let's talk about likes and dislikes. There's no dislikes whatsoever. Um, one thing I will say, it's not necessarily a dislike, it's a personal preference. So if you are just doing the top, it is a little short. The top will stop like right above your hip line if you just do the top. Um, and you could kind of see that on me from the photos. So that's why I wanted it a little longer and kind of stop past my butt. So that's why I did that extension piece. Yes, I could have just extended, you know, the top piece and the lower front piece, which is pattern piece number five and just have one piece, but why? I just wanted to take it a little bit further and have that, mm. you know what I'm saying? Uh, that's what I wanted to do. So that's what I did, so, and it came out amazing. Let's talk about first time experiences. Did I have any first time experience? No. You guys have seen me add extensions, lengthen, add elastic. There is nothing different that I have done. I have done pleats, I have done gathers. I think for this one, yeah, you will need to do some pleats and you will need to do some gathers. Other than that, 
This is completely super easy to sew for me, but this is an average sew pattern, which is why I did that sew along for you guys, all right? Um, let's talk about what I sew it again. To be honest with you, yes, I would, and I would probably sew it again to make it like more tiered or a maxi length. So I would extend both the lower front and the extension piece. So it's still two pieces, but just longer um, lengths for my extension piece. I could see that. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but let's talk about what I recommend this pattern to others. Yes, I would. That's why I did a sew along for you guys. All right. <laughs> now let's talk about my pattern rating. So my pattern rating for this pattern, I am going to stamp this pattern a four out of five. I love this pattern, I would sew it again, and I'm stamping it a four out of five because I feel like that lower front should be a little bit longer even for, even for a top. So because of that, I'm just gonna take off a point for that. And yeah, I think that's that's it. Like, everything else is great. Um, let's see, I think it should have gave another um, sleeve option even though they have the slit sleeve. It's just a slit on the side for view A, um, and they have the puff sleeve. Why not a short sleeve option? It could have gave a short sleeve option since they made a sleeveless option. So I think for this pattern, it should have been a sleeveless option, a short sleeve option, and then a three-fourths or long sleeve option for this pattern. That's just my personal preference um, when you want to kind of do different options for a pattern to sew so many different views. Now, you know, for this pattern... Me personally, I would have to make some modifications if I decide to sew it again, all right? Well, that's it for this pattern review. I hope you enjoyed the pattern review. Now what you guys are all here for is the sew along. So without further ado, go ahead to your concession stand, get your snacks, get your popcorn, get your drink, and let's head over to the sew along. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the next sew along. This is part of my transitional wardrobe from spring to summer. So we're going to be doing Simplicity 9748. I am doing view B with a modification of another uh, tier, which is another peplum. So I'm gonna call this like a double uh, dressy peplum style top. All right, so I'll be following along with view B on this tutorial. So let's go ahead and get into the tools and supplies that you will need in order to construct this top, Simplicity 9748. All right, so the tools and supplies that you will need in order to construct this uh, top would be your pins, of course. So I use two different uh, stacks. I have a pink and I have a purple. You will see both colors in the uh, sew along. Also, I use two pairs of scissors, one for paper, one for fabric. I never mix the two there. I also have rotary cutters, one for paper, one for fabric. I never mix the two there as well. I use a pencil, and the reason for the pencil is basically if I need to make any modifications, which I will be kind of showing you in this tutorial as well. I use rulers and the rulers is just because I'm making modifications. Um, and I also use a ruler if I'm making any darts, but this one does not have any darts, thank goodness. But <laughs> um, I use rulers as well. You will need the pattern. You'll also need the pattern instructions as well. You will need some marking tools. I'm just using disappearing marking, but I will not be using disappearing marking because I'm using a black fabric. So I will be using just a white solar bulb uh, pencil for to, ma to mark any of my dots as well. Um, I use a calculator and the calculator is basically if I need to make any adjustments to the pattern as well, which I did. So um, you will need a calculator. I always use a calculator uh, for the tutorials. A point turner as well. And then the only thing that you will need is elastic for your sleeve casing. Outside of that, those are all the tools and supplies that you will need in order to construct this top. So let's go ahead and get right on into the pattern instruction. All right, so let's look at the pattern instructions for Simplicity 9748. I'll tell you the pattern pieces you will need here shortly when I'll talk about the pattern pieces. But 
For the pattern instructions, I am cutting view B side 16 for this pattern. So I will be following this layout right here because the fabric that I'm using is actually like 52 inch fabric. It is some crepe fabric that I picked up from Joann's, believe it or not. Um, but pattern piece number five and seven, I need to cut with the wrong side of the pattern facing up, right side of the fabric facing down. That was what you will see in pattern piece number five and pattern piece number seven for the sides that I'm gonna, going to cut. Now, because it's 52, I'm not gonna use the 60 inch. I am using the cutting layout for 45 inch fabric, just so you know. So since I'm doing view B, one thing I will tell you is make sure you read the sewing directions and glossary of terms that you should know by now. Um, but if you don't go back to, you know, page number two, I guess, and read what ease and gather stitching is interfacing, narrow hem, stay stitch and under stitch. So we're going to start with uh, steps number one, two, five and six which is basically putting together your front as well as your tie ends for the back if you want ties in the back, which I will be doing. And then from there, we will go from number nine all the way to 21, which will be putting together your upper front as well as your uh, front pattern pieces. You will be putting on your yoke, your back facing as well, and then gathering the bottom, which is the lower front. I will also be gathering a lower front extension to make that double pap limb as well, and then you will hem, all right? Once you do that, the only thing left for you to do is go ahead and do your sleeves right here in step number 27 to 31. Sleeves, your sleeve casing, and then attach your sleeves to your top, and then you are all done. So it's kind of like a fairly simple sew, and we're gonna try to make it as simple as possible, all right? So now let's go ahead and get into the pattern pieces you will need in order to construct this top. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the pattern pieces you will need in order to construct Simplicity 9748, which is what I'm gonna call my dressy double peplum top. You will need pattern piece number 11, which are your sleeves. You need to cut to a fabric. Make sure you transfer all your dots, your notches, as well, all of your marking. Make sure you uh, transfer all of those as well, all right? Next pattern piece that you will need is pattern piece number 12. Now this is just your elastic guide. So you will just need to cut a strip of fabric. Uh, I'm sorry, a strip of elastic for your elastic guide. Next piece you will need is pattern piece number six, which is your back. You need to cut to a fabric. Make sure you transfer all your markings as well. Next pattern piece is pattern piece number 10, which is your tie ends for the back. You need to cut to a fabric. Make sure you transfer that pleat as well. Next pattern piece is pattern piece number seven. You need to cut one on the fold of fabric and also interface this piece as well. Now I will interface here shortly for mine. Next pattern piece is pattern piece number four, which is your yoke front. You need to cut four fabric and interface two. Next pattern piece is pattern piece number one, which is your upper front. You need to cut two on the fold of fabric and then interface one on the fold of fabric. Next pattern piece is pattern piece number two, which is your upper side front. You need to cut two of fabric. And the last pattern piece that you need to cut is pattern piece number five, which is your lower front. You need to cut one on the fold of fabric. Now, I did a modification and I'm gonna show you my modification that I did to pattern piece number five. I'm calling it uh, pattern piece number five A, which is my lower front extension. So what I did is I traced around pattern piece number five, which is this line right here. I'm hoping you're able to see this. So pattern piece number five is this portion right here. I extended the length by seven and one fourth. Reason being is because I wanted to do six inches in length, right? To make a second peplum that's gonna be, look, it's gonna look like a double peplum, okay? Now I wanted it six inches, but I did add, you know, seam allowance. So that's why, because the top and the bottom is five eighths of an inch seam allowance, right? it's going to end up being six inches of length instead of seven and a quarter, all right? So whatever you do to the front, you need to do to the back. So I did lengthen the back the same amount, which was seven and a quarter, all right? So that's, that's one thing that I will tell you. Um, now, I will put this 
I will do chapters in this video if you are unfamiliar with how my sew alongs work. I put chapters in so you can skip to the portion that you need. And because this is a lower front extension, you can skip past that part if you do not want to do that. So just so you know how to make that front extension, if you want it, copy or trace the pattern piece number five and then extend it the length that you want at the bottom. You're going to do the same thing for pattern piece number six, which is your back. Whatever you extend it at the bottom, you're going to extend at the bottom of pattern piece number six, which is your back. All right. Now that we talked about that, let's go ahead and get right on into the sewing. All right. So let's go ahead and start. Um, you will need pattern piece number one and pattern piece number two. Now pattern piece number one is you should have one that's interface and one that's not interface. So make sure that you transfer your stitching line as well. So I'm going to open this out for you. So you should have one, which will be your main piece. Make sure you transfer this stitching line right here, which is like a V. Okay. Cause you're going to cut into that. So you should have one that's interface and then one that's not interface. Make sure you transfer that stitching line for pattern piece number one. Now I'm not going to show you how to transfer it. I'm just going to show you that make sure that when you cut this piece out, you cut and stop right here. This piece right here should be on the fold of your fabric. Okay. And then on the right side of your fabric, make sure that you transfer this stitching line based off of what sides you cut. I, I cut a size 16, so I'm following that stitching line. All right. So I'm going to move a pattern piece one out of my way just real quick grab pattern piece number two and what you're going to do is you're going to create a stitching line you probably can't see this because i'm using black fabric which is a crate but you have notches right here okay so you're going to stay stitch at a half of an inch seam allowance right here between the two notches that you have at the center front of your uh top okay and then once you do that, you're going to gather from notch to notch at your shoulders. All right. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right. So let's go ahead and stay stitch in between the two notches here. You do not need to back stitch doing this. So go ahead and stay stitch. Now that I'm at the notch, I'm going to go ahead and break my thread. And then at the shoulders, what I'm going to do between the notches from notch to notch, I'm going to make gathering stitches. So I'm going to switch my length stitch to the longest stitch on my machine, which is 5.0. And then I'm going to gather, I'm going to make the first gather at about three eighths of an inch. So I'm going to back stitch at the beginning of that notch. And so all the way across. Now, instead of breaking my thread, I'm just going to pull the threads, break it off and then make a second one. And I'm going to make that second one at about a half of an inch. So I'm going to make the next one at a half of an inch, put my presser foot down. I'm going to back stitch. And so get to that notch. And then I'm just going to lift my presser foot and my needle and then just break the thread. All right, just like that. All right. All right, so now that I have it stay stitch along the front in between the notches, I went ahead and gathered at the very top. The next thing you want to do are your pleats at the bottom. So I'm gonna bring this up so you can see. So you see where I have an arrow going this way and then the another arrow going the opposite direction. I'm gonna show you the pattern piece of what you need to be doing. So what you're going to do is with the right side of your fabric facing up, you're going to take this line of the pleat, move it over to this middle, and then take this line over to that middle to form your pleat. So what it looks like is I'm turning it this way. I'm going to take that line, which I made little clips at the bottom, and I'm just going to move that one over there. And I'm going to actually pen right there. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the other one which right here, and I'm going to bring that one down. All right. And I'm going to pin, I'm going to do the same thing to the other top piece as well. The other, um, 
upper side front. And then all you want to do is go to your sewing machine and baste across. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that we have pattern piece number two, which is your upper side front, we have the pleats done. It looks like this. I'm hoping you can see that because I did use a really dark fabric. So I do apologize about that, but this is what it should look like. On the inside, you should have a little small pleat like that, all right? So I'm gonna move pattern piece two out of the way. Go ahead and grab pattern piece number 10, which are your tight ends, okay? Now, this is what you're going to do. You're going to hem the top one side and the bottom. You're not going to touch the portion that has the pleat and the two dots. So narrow hem is when you press up the seam allowance. So create a 5 8 of an inch basting stitch if you cannot determine 5 8 I highly advise you to make a stitching line that's 5 8 of an inch, press it, and then press that in, and then press to that line, open it out, press to that line, and then press it up again, and then sew along the top one side and the bottom, making a narrow hem on both of your tight ends, all right? Once you do that, you're going to do your pleats the exact same way like we just did on our side front. Once again, you're going to take that clip, bring it over to the center, both of those to the center, and then base across, all right? So go ahead and do your narrow hem on your tie ends and that pleat on your tie ends now. All right, so now that I have my tie ends done, I went ahead and did the pleats at the end. I went ahead and pressed that pleat as you can see right here. So grab your upper front, and what you're going to do is you have two dots right here, right? And what you're going to do is you're going to take where you have the two dots from your pleats and you're going to pin right there. Now I can see my dot right there. So that's going to match up with that top one and the other one's going to match up with the bottom. Make sure the raw edges are even and you're going to pin. And now that I have it pinned, what I'm going to do is go to the sewing machine and I'm just going to base the tie ends onto my upper front. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have my tie ends put on, I based it across, go ahead and move this out the way. Well, you're not gonna move it too far, but what you're gonna do is grab pattern piece number one, the one that is interface, all right? So, and what you're going to do is with right sides together, you're going to pin your side front to your upper front. So pattern piece number two, pattern piece number one. And what you're gonna do is with right sides together, you're going to pin them. So you should have two notches on your pattern piece number one, that's this one right here. You have two notches, and then you have two notches on pattern piece number two. So what you're going to do, I'm gonna turn it to where you can see it. So you have, a dot, so those dots should meet up. Make sure you pin at the notch, so I'm gonna pin right there at the notch, that notch. I'm gonna pin right there at the other notch right here. And then I'm gonna pin along the side of the upper front. So I'm gonna pin at the top, and then just pin at the bottom as well. So go ahead and pin your side front to your front now making sure you keep the tie ends out of the way. So you want to make sure that you have it tucked in, the ties tucked in just like that and pen, okay? But make sure you do not catch the ties in where they do not belong. So just make sure that they are kind of out of your way. All right, so now that I have uh, the upper front pinned on my side, front or my side front print to my upper front using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance back stitch at the bottom and then sew all the way up to the top using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Now one thing I want to say is make sure that you have your tie ends flat when you do this and on the inside okay just like that and make sure you sew 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance using a regular length stitch, and then once you're done with that, you want to clip where you need to and press your seams open. Go ahead and do that 
now. All right, so now that I have the side, the upper side front on to the upper front. Now, I wanna say this because I put it up on the screen, but I wanna say this. On the tithe, if you did right sides together, the right side of your tie to the right side of your fabric, that's wrong. It's supposed to be a wrong side of your tie to the right side of your upper side front to where it looks like this, to where the right side is right here and then the wrong side is touching yours. So if you uh, sewed it the wrong way, which I put it up on the screen for you to do it, to have the ties touching, um, the wrong side of the ties touching, because I know I said right sides together, so I do apologize to that, so I'm making that correction now, even though I put it up on the screen. Um, go ahead and fix that. In order to fix it, if you did right sides together, like I originally said, instead of wrong sides together, I'm sorry I said that, but I pinned it the right way. Um, just pick out from the tie down and then just turn it around and then stitch it back together, all right? So that's where we're at right now. So the next thing you want to do, I'm gonna move this out of my way. Grab your facing up of your upper front, which is pattern piece number one. And like the instruction says, you're going to stay stitch the neck edge. The neck edge is the inside along that stitching line for the V. So I went ahead and stay stitched from the top all the way down to that V. With my needle down, I pivot and went back up and that was at a half of the inch seam allowance. Once I did that, I created a basting stitch along the notched edge portion all the way down to the bottom. And then I pressed it under and made some clips along the curved portion, all right? So this is what it looks like. I'm gonna bring it up to the camera. All right, so that's what it looks like. And now what you're going to do, you're going to pin that onto your upper front. All right, so what we're gonna do is pin our facing to our upper front at the, I guess you could call it the neck edge, right across here. So you're just going to pin this on just like this. So you're gonna pin right there, pin across both, and then you're gonna pin the V area along, you're gonna pin along the entire neck edge. So go ahead and pin your neck edge now. All right, so now that I have my facing pinned onto my upper front, right sides together, all right? So what you're going to do is you're gonna follow where you made that stay stitch, right? Your neck edge, you're gonna stitch right on top of it. Using a regular length stitch, you're gonna start at the beginning, back stitch at the beginning, so along that same line that you just did a stay stitch for, until you get to your dot for that deep V, and then you're gonna pivot and go up. Now you're gonna be sewing at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Even though you stay stitch at a half of an inch, I will be sewing this at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, down one side, pivot, and then back up the other side. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I attach the facing at the neck edge right here, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it and you're going to clip what you're gonna do is you're gonna clip this V all the way down. Do not clip through the stitching. You just wanna to clip to the dot, but not through the stitching, okay? So I'm just gonna stop right there. That's good enough for me. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna trim down the seam allowance right here. Just trim it down, but do not clip through your stitching on both sides, okay? So I'm just gonna trim it down. All right, so now that I have it trimmed down, what I'm going to do is I'm going to understitch as close as possible. So make sure that your seam allowance is pressed towards the facing, with this is the facing, not the portion that's interface, the portion that is not interface, and you're going to understitch on top of the facing. Understitch is done at about a fourth of an inch from this pressed edge. Just go ahead and understitch on both sides. Once you do that, you're going to turn your facing to the inside and then uh, baste it at the bottom. So we'll, I'll show you how to do that in just a second. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I understitched the facing portion, I pressed it to the inside. Now, let me tell you something that you will need to do if you have not done this already, because I have not. 
So what you want to do, move this out of the way, you want to trim down this seam on both sides. So I'm going to trim both sides down, uh, being careful not to cut your fabric. I'm going to go ahead and trim it down now and then tell you what to do next. All right, so now that I have the um, upper front trim down the portion that's interface, what you want to do is you want to press this part. Now I'm gonna go ahead and press mine uh, now and then I'm gonna come back and show you what to do next. So go ahead and press that down now. All right, so now, I'm, now that I have the inside pressed and pinned, so this is what it should look like. You should have trimmed the upper front which was the interface down. I pressed that to the inside and then I basically have the pressed edge of the facing um, about an eighth of an inch over the stitching line. Um, and this is what's going to happen. You're supposed to stitch in the ditch. So what I did was I went ahead and pinned it on the right side and I'm going to be stitching in the ditch all the way down, all the way down. Now, you want to make sure that your tithe is out of the way and you want to stitch in the ditch all the way down on both sides. Once you do that, then you want to base across the bottom. All right. So go ahead and stitch in the ditch along the neck, the inner portion to secure that press edge on the inside of the facing and then base across the bottom. Go ahead and do that now. All right. So now that I have the front, I went ahead and understitched or stitched in the ditch so it looks good on both the inside and the outside. The ties are looking good. So the next thing we're gonna do is our yoke piece. So grab the ones that are interfaced, right? And what you want to do is you have two uh, notches. So look for the portion that have two notches and then you have a dot, so you have a dot and two notches and you're going to pin it like this. You have that little edge. So that edge goes to this side. Okay. And you want to pin. Now, if you need to kind of gather your shoulder seam for it to fit, you can do that all as well. All right. So you want to do that. So go ahead and kind of gather if you need to for your, uh, notches to fit. All right. Then I'm going to pin there where the other notch is. And then I'm going to pin that dot right here goes to the very end. That's why you need to gather a little bit. Okay. So make sure that everything is matching up and then you're going to pin. So I'm going to pin right there as well. So that dot that you have match up to the, the front of your upper front. Okay. And then gather if you need to, like I just mentioned, and then you're going to pin. All right. I'm going to show you again on the other side as well. If you need to make some more, put some more pins in, you can do that as well. All right. So now on the other side, I'm going to make sure I'm able to see my notches and my yoke. All right. There's a dot right there. So that dot matches up to the center front right here or the front, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to pin that there first. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for the first notch and I want to pin that. But first I need to gather. All right. So I'm going to pin this notch to this notch right here. Okay. I'm going to pin there and I'm going to pin at the end. Now I'm going to use my gathering stitches to gather to make sure that that second notch meet up with the notch on my yoke. All right. So I'm just going to gather just a little bit to make sure that that notch meet up with this notch right here. Okay. And I'm going to pin. And now I'm going to adjust my gather so it's not all bunched up or anything. And then I'm go going to pin again. And then I'm just going to pin right there as well. All right. Let me adjust it just a little bit more. All right. So now using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and a regular length stitch, I'm going to back stitch at the beginning. So all the way to that dot right here. Right. 
and then backstitch at the dot. Do not go past that dot, all right? Once you do that, you're gonna uh, go ahead and trim down your seams and press your seams towards your yoke, all right? So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have the yoke pinned on, I just basted them on, right? So now what you're gonna do is I'm going to fold them down and I'm going to turn it to where I'm looking at the inside of my top, all right? So now what you're gonna do is take your yoke piece, right? And you're going to literally just place it on top of right side to wrong side of your, uh, right? Right side to wrong side of your top, all right? And all you're gonna do is match it up and basically pin in place, all right? So what we're gonna do is pin all the way across, making sure that your yoke pieces match up, all right? I'm, I'm sorry, across the top and one side, all right? So go ahead and pin your yoke piece in place now, your yoke facing to your yoke now. All right, so now that I have my yoke facing pinned onto my yoke, using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance and a regular length stitch, what you're gonna do is sew across the top and along the front using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, all right? You're gonna backstitch at the beginning, backstitch at the end, and then trim your um, seam allowance down. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so I pinned it and everything. I turned it right side out after stitching the facing on. So what I'm gonna do, you should press it. And then what you wanna do is just pin and baste the top and the unfinished raw edge side. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pin just like this. And then what I'm going to do, I'm gonna base across and base down the side. And then after I do that, I'm just gonna pull this to the side, put, put this off to the side right quick. Grab pattern piece number six, which are your back pattern pieces. And what you're going to do with pattern piece number six, now I extended mine by seven and a quarter inch to accommodate for the front as well, all right? So the first thing you wanna do is stay stitch the neck edge. After you do that, now you can finish off your center back seam right now, or you could finish it um, together. It's completely up to you. But what you wanna do is pin at your notches right there, pin at the top, and then pin at the pin the length of your center back seam. So go ahead and pin from top to bottom or bottom to top, whichever one that you like to do. Uh, go ahead and pin this the side seam now, the center back seam. All right, so now that I have the back uh, pin using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance and a regular length stitch, back stitch at the beginning and at the end and then finish off your seam allowance. Go ahead and stitch your center back seam together now. All right, so now that I have the back done, go ahead and grab your front piece and with the right sides together, you're going to attach at the shoulders. Just make sure you are looking at the wrong side, which is where your facing is, that's under stitch. Do not accidentally sew it on like this, where you're looking at your ties, all right? So what you want is with right sides together, right? You want to attach at the shoulders, all right? So make sure that your, um, make sure that you're attaching your front to your back at your shoulders and pin. So go ahead and attach your yoke to your um, back now. And then all you're gonna do is stitch across your shoulders. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so I'm gonna pin this one together. This edge goes to that dot and you're going to pin at that dot, and then the other end goes to that corner, and you're gonna pin, and then pin across your shoulder seams. All right, so now using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, backstitch at the beginning and at the end, and sew across both shoulder seams. Go ahead and do that now. Now, 
Before I do that, what I'm gonna do is grab pattern piece number seven, which is my back facing. Now, what you can do to keep from having to go to the sewing machine so many times, right? The first thing you wanna do is, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to search the bottom edge and then I'm going to place this right on top, okay, of this piece and then sew across my facing piece, okay? So just sew across here and there. So I'm just gonna basically sandwich my yoke piece um, on top of my front and back, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and search this edge, pin, and then sew across um, the shoulder seams, making sure you catch all of it in. So go ahead and do that. Now, if you, need to, if you wanna add your label, you could go ahead and add your label to your back facing now. So go ahead and do all of that now. All right, so I went ahead and finished off the bottom edge of the back. I went ahead and put in my label. So I'm gonna show you guys this, but normally I wouldn't because I feel like at this point you should be able to do this, but there's a dot right here on your back that matches up with your uh, dot that's on the back of your top, all right? And then you're just going to pin this, the back facing onto the yoke and back. Your yoke, which is your front, the yoke of your front is sandwiched in between your back facing and your back, okay? Now I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. I'm going to pin the dots, match that up and pin. Then I'm going to make sure that everything else pins all the way across. And then I'm gonna put one more pin right here. Now, the only thing I have to do is match up the center back seams, the notches there. So I'm gonna make sure I can see my notches from the interface. And I'm just going to definitely pin at my notch and pin all the way across, okay? So go ahead and pin your back facing to your back now. All right, so now that I have repin and pinned my back facing onto my yoke and back, using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, what I'm gonna do is sew across both shoulders and then sew my back uh, facing on. So go ahead and do that now using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and a regular length stitch. Back stitch at the beginning and at the end. Go ahead and sew that on now. All right, so I have the back facing on. I have the shoulders attached. It's looking really, really nice. Um, the back look a little long. I'm gonna turn it this way so you kind of see how long that back is. The ties is on there. It's looking really nice. Now what I'm gonna do is move this out the way so I can start working on my lower portion of this uh, tunic which can also be a dress as well. So let me move this out the way and we're gonna start working on our tunic. All right, so let's start working on our lower front and lower front extension. All right, so this part you could kind of do yourself. You really don't need my help on this, but all you're going to do is gather the top portion and hem the lower portion. So this is pattern piece number five. You're gonna do the same thing for the extension piece. So you want to gather and you're gonna get make gathering stitches in between the two dots. So you're just gonna create two rows of gathers. I'm gonna create my first one at a half an inch and the second one at three eighths of an inch. Then at the bottom, I'm going to hem, you can make a narrow hem or you could do what I do and just search the bottom edge and fold under five eighths of an inch seam allowance and stitch in place, all right? So you're gonna do that for the lower front, which is pat, uh, pattern piece number five, like you see. And then on the lower extension, you're gonna do the exact same thing, okay? So you're gonna gather in between the two dots, hem at the bottom as well. Then what you want to do, which I'm gonna come back and show you guys this portion. So after you hem it, so this is my extension piece. If you are not doing the extension piece, you could definitely move on from this portion, okay? 
just fast forward a little bit. So after you have your um, portion gathered and you have it hem, you're going to place your lower front right on top, wrong side of lower front to right side of the extension, right? Right. So the right side of your, so basically it's going to look like a double peplum. So you're going to have, uh, the bottom hem on both of these. Then all you're going to do is treat it as one piece. So you're going to base the cross and then base across both sides to treat this piece as one piece before you attach it to the bottom of your front. All right. I hope all of that makes sense. But once I do that, I will show you what it looks like. All right. So go ahead and gather in between the two dots. Go ahead and make your hem on your front. If you're doing the extension, make your hem on the extension and gather the top pieces and then base the sides and the top. So go ahead and do that now. All right. So I went ahead and gathered the lower front and the lower front extension. And I also went ahead and hem. Now, one thing I did not do was go ahead and attach it and make a one piece simply because you have to attach both pieces to your top. So I'm going to show you how to do that. If you did not do the extension, you're just going to have one piece. If you decided to do the extension like I did, you will have two. And I'm going to show you how to attach both of them. So go ahead and grab your top and just move your back out of the way. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the front portion of my top on the table facing up. So this is the right side of my top. That's why you see the ties, right? And then I'm going to take the short piece, okay? So this is the lower front, not the extension. I'm moving the extension out of the way right quick. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to definitely pin my um, lower front to my uh, front, all right? Make sure your ties are out of the way. It makes a big difference, okay? So you wanna make sure you are matching up your notches, your dots as well. So make sure you are matching up everything, everything, okay? So. I have a notch right here. So that notch match up with this notch right here. And I'm going to pin. And like I said, make sure you try to keep your ties out of the way. And then you have to pin at the end as well. Now your dots right here matches up to the side seam of your, um, your uh, front. So each side seam, you should have a dot. So that's why it needs to be gathered really, really good. All right. And then I'm just going to pin all the way across the uh, bottom portion of my front. And I'm going to pin the lower front onto the upper front, if that makes sense. So go ahead and continue to pin all the way across. Now, adjusting your gathers, if you need to pull up some more gathers, do so, do what you feel is best for you and your top, all right? So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have, I'm just gonna move my ties out of the way. I'm just gonna kind of like move them down so they're not being caught into the top. So now that I have my lower front pinned onto my top, if you did not do the extension using five eighths of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning and at the end using a regular length stitch and sew this across all the way across, back stitching at both ends and then finish off your seams and then press your seam allowance towards the upper front, all right? So basically you're gonna press your seam allowance to the upper front. Now, if you are doing the extension, you're going to pull up your threads. Don't, don't go in, uh, sew it on yet because we want to repin to where we only have to sew this portion one time. And you're going to do the exact same thing. Now, right side of your extension to the wrong side of your uh, lower front. 
and you're just going to basically pin just like you just did. So we're just going to repin once again, matching up the dots, the notches and all that good stuff. And then you're going to pin all the way across. All right. So go ahead and basically attach your extension to your lower front and upper front now. All right, so now that I have the extension onto my lower front and my lower front attached to my upper front, using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance and a regular length stitch, back stitch at the beginning and at the end, sew across using a regular length stitch, and then finish off your seam allowance. Once you finish off your seam allowance, press your seam towards your upper front. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have the lower front attached to my upper front, and then I have the extension attached to my lower front. So I have it completely, you know, exactly like I want it. You know, I have it like a, a double tier type um, top, all right? So I'm gonna move my top out of the way and grab your sleeves and your elastic. Now I'm gonna show you what my sleeve looked like. This is one of the sleeves, so I'm gonna show you how to do the other sleeve. If you go to my video, Simplicity 6698, where I did a puff sleeve blouse, it is the exact same thing for the sleeves, all right? So I'm just gonna tell you a little bit of what I did, and I'm gonna kinda of walk you through on how to put the sleeves in, and then you will be on your own to do the other sleeve and finish off your uh, top, all right? So once we do the sleeve, you are all done with your top, all right? So what you're going to do is create gathering stitches at the sleeve cap. So on the side where it's a notch, what you're gonna do is using a basting stitch, you're gonna back stitch at the beginning, so all the way to the double notch, and then just pull up thread, all right? Now I did the first stitching at a half an inch and the second one at three eighths of an inch. It avoids from, you know, having to pull out gathering stitches after stitching five eighths of an inch seam allowance. So that's why when I do gathering stitches, I do it at a different um, seam allowance than what's called for in the instructions, right? So after making gathering stitches on my sleeve cap, like you see here, the next thing I did was create five eighths of an inch gathering stitches stitches, or I should say E-stitch, which is the longest stitch on your machine, which is the basting stitch. I created 5 eighths of an inch all the way across the bottom hem, pressed to that line, and then pressed it up again, and you will get something that looks like this to encase it, all right? Now, I did that all the way across, and I stitched on the right side, and I basically based it, uh, stitched it using a regular length stitch at about three eighths of an inch. Now I'm going to sift elastic through. Now my elastic is three eighths of an inch seam, allow uh, seam allowance, right? So the elastic is three eighths of an inch. Here's the thing I wanna tell you. If you are using a half of an inch seam allowance, make sure that you make your basting stitch at least <laughs> six eighths, all right? Which, which comes out to be as close as possible. You want six eighths of an inch seam allowance, or you know, when you say six eighths, it's like three fourths, right? So you want to basically, if you're doing, if you're using a half an inch, make sure that your basting stitch is six eighths or three fourths of an inch seam allowance all the way across, so you do not run into the casing is too small to sift your uh, elastic through. All right. So what I'm gonna do now is sift my elastic all the way through. Make sure that your elastic do not go all the way through. So one thing I like to do is I like to basically hold on to the end of my elastic. Um, I just basically kind of like pull it with my teeth, but you do not wanna do that. You could pin it if you want, but that's what I do. So I'm just gonna go ahead and sift my elastic through now and then uh, secure it at the end. So go ahead and sift your elastic through now. All right, so now that I have my elastic sifted all the way through, what I'm gonna do is on this side where my uh, safety pin is, I'm just gonna stitch it down at probably about a fourth of an inch, three eighths of an inch or whatnot. And I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side, but make sure that you adjust your elastic to make sure that it's not tight 
um, on your wrist. All right. Well, I think this one is three fourths. So you don't want it to be tight on your forearm right here, which is three fourths of an inch. Okay. So go ahead and adjust that, secure it on the side, and then we'll insert it into our sleeve. Go ahead and do that now. All right. So I went ahead and inserted my elastic all the way across. I secured it at the end. Now go ahead. Oh, and I gathered at the sleeve cap. So go ahead and grab your top and you want to turn it where you have the arm's eye facing like a U. You see how that U forms? All right, so what I'm gonna tell you is this, my left side is my front, the right side is my back. How do I know I have one notch for the front, two notches for the back? And all I'm doing is basically installing my sleeve. If you have been following me for some time, you know I do all my sleeves like this. That doesn't require like a cuff or anything like this. That I will be installing my sleeve using the flat method. That is my preferred way, my, fer my preferred way of installing sleeves, all right? So the first thing I'm gonna do is attach the single notch, which is for the front. And I'm going to pin there. I'm going to pin at the very end, pin there. And then I have a dot in the center right here. That goes to my shoulder seams as well. Now, really, it goes to the center of your shoulder, right? So you have that yoke piece right here. So um, your shoulder, what I'm gonna do is, this portion right here is more like your back. This portion right here is more like your shoulder where your yoke is. So my center is going to be this line right here towards my back. So I'm going to line that up with that. I'll adjust it if I need to. So I'm gonna line it up just like that. And then I'm going to go to that double notch right here and I'm going to match the double notch up and I'm going to pin, and I'm going to pin at the end as well, just like so. All right, so now I'm gonna go back and adjust the gathers and pin starting at the front. So I'm just going to adjust um, the gathers if I need to take in some more to where it's not like just drooping, I guess. You know, I'll go ahead and take in and I'm just gonna pin all the way across my uh, arm's eye or sleeve, um, making sure that it fits nicely and it's not bunched up or causing any type of pleats or puckers. And I'm just gonna adjust together as I'm pinning. So go ahead and pin across your sleeve and arm hole arm's eye area now. All right, so now that I have my sleeve pinned into my arm hole arm's eye area, using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance and a regular length stitch back stitch at the beginning and at the end and then finish off your seam allowance go ahead and do that now all right so now that you have your sleeve sewn into your top you finished off the um sleeve the seam allowance to your sleeve the only thing left for you to do is sew your side seam so what you're going to do is with uh right sides together. Now I'm going to pin it from the bottom to the top. Now, a couple of things I want to mention is if you have this extension piece, right, right here, this is the long piece, this is the shorter piece. You want to make sure your seam allowance is up towards your um, bodice portion, I should say, all right? Now you're going to repin, so just make sure you have that and then you could pin where you have the bottom portion of that um, first tier or lower front, you know, and then you're just going to put the back on top of the front. All right. Now, first thing I'm going to do is pin at my underarm seams, making sure that the seam allowance is up towards the sleeve. All right. Not down towards your top, up towards the sleeve. I'm going to pin there. I'm going to pin the notch that I have on my sleeves. I'm going to pin at my hem of the sleeves, just like so, like this, all right? And then I'm just gonna add some more pins right here 
um, at the sleeve area. So go ahead and add some more pins. Now, what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna work on the bottom portion of my side seam, all right? First things first, you have a notch right here on your back. Go ahead and pin there, all right? Now I'm going to pin at the hem. So I'm just gonna match that up, pin at the hem. And I'm going to pin the length of the back. This is the back, okay, that I'm looking at. That's why you see the open seam right here. Now, just make sure everything is flat and basically all you're gonna do is repin your front to your back or your back to your front. Make sure everything underneath is flat and just basically pin your entire side seam, your back to your front at the side seam. So go ahead and pin your side seams now. All right, so now that I have my back pinned onto my front using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance and a regular length stitch, I'm gonna start at my hem, back stitch at the beginning, so all the way up your back and through the sleeve and back stitch at the hem of your sleeve. Once you do that, you're going, going to go ahead and finish off your seam allowance, all right? So go ahead and do that now. All right, so there you have it. That's the complete pattern review and so along for Simplicity 9748, a top turn tunic or a LBD or little black dress. I hope you enjoyed this pattern review and so along. And since you made it this far, do not forget to hit that like button, subscribe button, and also smash that notification bell so you are notified every time I upload a new video. I'm gonna say this again, check the description box so you are able to vote on the next three sew alongs for the summertime, all right? So it closes on the 25th, which is Sunday. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Until next time, keep sewing. <laughs>